Good morning everyone. Today we will be discussing sound production, transmission, and propagation. Let us explore together the fascinating ways in which sound can be produced, transmitted, and propagated. Strike the prongs of a tuning fork with a rubber pad and hold it close to your ear to hear sound produced. Investigating further, suspend a table tennis ball and touch it with the vibrating prongs. The ball will be pushed away repeatedly, demonstrating that the prongs are indeed vibrating. This shows that sound is generated through vibrations of an object. Sound is an extraordinary phenomenon which has been explored for centuries. We know that sound is caused by vibrations, and these vibrations travel through the air, water and other materials. This is how sound reaches our ears. What is remarkable is that the particles of the medium through which sound moves do not themselves progress, but instead disturb the particles around them, creating a ripple effect. This phenomenon is called a wave, and since it is caused by the vibration of particles, sound waves are recognized as mechanical waves. Through this ripple effect, sound can travel from the origin of the vibration to the hearer. All things considered, an incredible journey that continually captivates us. An object vibrating causes regions of high and low pressure in the air in front of it as it moves forward and backward. Compressions are created when it moves forward and rarefactions when it moves backward. These compressions and rarefactions allow sound to travel through the air, thus air is an essential medium for the propagation of sound. The varying speeds of the vibrating object create a series of compressions and rarefactions, which enable sound to travel through the air and be heard by our ears. An object is seen vibrating in the image, causing a series of air pressure increases, known as compressions, C, and air pressure decreases, known as rarefactions, R. These changes are what we hear as sound and can travel through a medium, like air, and be transmitted from its source to its destination. When the switch is pressed on an electric bell suspended in an airtight bell jar, the sound of the bell can be heard. This illustrates that sound needs a medium to travel, and that medium can be air, solids, liquids, and gases. However, if air is pumped out of the bell jar, the sound of the bell is no longer heard, demonstrating that sound cannot travel in vacuum. Bell jars, electric bells, and corks are often used to demonstrate this concept. Sound is an essential component of our environment, providing us with information about our surroundings. Sound waves are longitudinal waves, which propagate through a medium as a series of compressions and rarefactions. These can be observed when the particles move back and forth parallel to the direction of propagation of the disturbance. In contrast, transverse waves oscillate up and down perpendicular to the direction of the disturbance. These can be observed in action by stretching a slinky and pushing and pulling it alternately at one end. By marking a dot on the slinky, you can observe the dot move back and forth in parallel to the direction of the propagation. Sound waves are forms of energy consisting of vibrations traveling through a medium such as air or water. These waves can be quantified by measuring their frequency, amplitude and speed. Graphically, Sound waves can be represented in the form of a wave, with changes in the density and pressure as it moves through a medium. The upper part of the wave is known as a crest, where the pressure and density is high, while the lower portion of the wave is known as a trough and has a lower pressure and density. The distance between two consecutive compressions or between two consecutive troughs is referred to as the wavelength and is symbolized by the Greek letter lambda. The International System of Units, SI, unit for wavelength is meter, M. Frequency is a crucial element in understanding how sound is transmitted through a medium. It is calculated by summing the number of oscillations that occur in a single unit of time. An oscillation is a full cycle where the density of the medium reaches from its highest to its lowest values. Its unit of measurement is represented by the Greek letter nu, and measured in hertz, hz. It is important to note that frequency plays an essential role in our perception of sound. 
High frequencies are typically linked to high-pitched sounds, while low frequencies are usually associated with lower-pitched sounds. To have a better comprehension of how sound is transmitted we need to determine the frequency of the sound wave. The frequency of a sound wave is inversely related to the time period, meaning that the higher the frequency, the shorter the time period. T represents the time period of one complete oscillation in the density of the medium and is measured in seconds, s. The relationship between frequency and time period can be expressed as 1 over 1 oscillation equals T, 1 second. Power of sound depends on the amplitude and wavelength of a sound wave. Amplitude is the size of disturbance of a medium surrounding the average value, while wavelength is the range between two consecutive crests of a wave. Examining the table, it is apparent that higher amplitude corresponds to a louder sound, and shorter wavelength to a higher frequency. Consequently, louder sound is associated with higher frequency. The pitch of a sound is determined by the frequency of vibration. This can be seen in the table, as the frequency is given for different wavelengths. As the wavelength decreases and the frequency increases, the pitch increases. It should be noted that for a sound to be audible, the frequency must be within the range of 2.0 Hz. Sounds outside this range are not perceptible by the human ear. Sound is produced when vibrations cause changes in air pressure. The size of the resulting wave, or the amplitude of the vibration, determines the loudness of the sound. As the amplitude gets bigger, the sound gets louder. This relationship can be seen in the table beside the slide, which shows a correlation between the amplitude of the wave and the loudness of the sound it produces. At 25 degrees Celsius, solids generally have a higher speed of sound than liquids, which are faster than gases. Temperature also affects the speed of sound. When temperatures are higher, the speed of sound increases. The speed, frequency and wavelength of sound all have a relationship to each other, such that the speed of sound is equal to the wavelength of sound multiplied by its frequency. This can be seen in the table, which shows the speed of sound in various materials at 25 degrees Celsius with solid materials having the highest speed, followed by liquids and then gases. When a sound wave hits a solid or liquid surface, it is reflected in a manner similarly to light, with the angle of the reflected wave being equal to the angle of the incident wave. To experiment with this theory, take two pipes of the same length. Place one end of the pipe near a wall or metal plate, and place a clock near the open end. Place the other pipe near the clock until you can hear the sound. Measure the angle of incidence and reflection, you will find that they are both equal. As you raise up the pipe, the sound will become quieter and eventually disappear. When sound waves strike any solid object, they get reflected back in the form of an echo. If the surface is sufficiently distant, or there is considerable time gap between the original sound and the reflected sound, we can clearly hear an echo. Echoes can be heard from mountains, tall buildings, and other large surfaces. Reverberation occurs when sound is repeatedly reflected off of multiple surfaces. It is commonly heard in large halls and auditoriums. To reduce reverberation, roofs and walls are often covered with sound-absorbing materials like compressed fiberboards, rough plaster, or draperies. Sound has various applications. For instance, multiple reflection is utilized to make use of sound. Megaphones, horns, trumpets and chenets are all designed to direct sound in a particular direction without dispersing in all directions. Doctors use multiple reflections of sound to hear sounds from the human body with a stethoscope, like a heartbeat. In movie theaters and auditoriums, the ceilings are usually curved to guarantee sound, with multiple reflection, reaches all sections of the hall. A curved soundboard is also sometimes placed behind the stage to distribute sound uniformly throughout a hall through multiple reflection. Humans possess the unique ability to detect and produce sound, making it an integral part of life. The range of sound frequencies that humans are able to detect is referred to as sonic hearing, 
and ranges from 20 Hz to 2000 Hz. Below 20 Hz, sound is classified as infrasonic and animals such as dogs, elephants, and rhinoceroses are able to both produce and hear this frequency. Above 2000 Hz, sound is classified as ultrasonic, and animals like dolphins, bats, and porpoises can both create and detect it. Bats are particularly adept at using the reflection of ultrasonic sound waves to detect obstacles or prey. Ultrasonic sound is a form of sound wave with a frequency that is beyond human hearing range. Its numerous practical applications include cleaning, detecting cracks in metal blocks, medical imaging, and breaking small stones in the kidneys. In the cleaning process, the ultrasonic sound creates a scouring effect in a solution that eliminates dirt from objects. Ultrasonic waves can also penetrate metal blocks, and when they are reflected back, they can detect cracks. For medical imaging, ultrasonic sound is sent into the patient, from which 3D images of internal organs can be generated. Finally, ultrasonic sound can also be used to fragment small stones in the kidneys into fine particles that can then be passed through the urine. The tenth slide describes sonar technology. A device which uses ultrasonic waves to measure the distance, direction, and speed of underwater objects. It works by transmitting ultrasonic sound waves which travel through water, and reflecting back to a detector. The time taken for transmission and reception of ultrasound is used to calculate the distance between the object and the device. Sonar has a range of applications in oceanography, fishing, navigation, and even geological surveys. The possibilities are endless. Humans have a complex and amazing ear. The outer ear, or pinna, collects sound waves. These waves enter the ear canal and vibrate the eardrum, a thin membrane. The three bones of the middle ear, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, amplify the vibrations. The middle ear then sends the sound waves to the inner ear. Inside the inner ear, the cochlea converts the sound waves into electrical signals and sends them to the brain via the auditory nerves. The brain interprets the signals and allows us to hear. Thanks for listening.